Holy Spirit's waiting. Can you send something just anticipation? Just to knowing that God's here. He wants to do something. He wants to reveal, he reveal himself to us. He's looking for a bunch of people who will listen. Be willing. Be obedient. Not leaving to their own understanding. And realize that, hey, and I'm talking about me, the biggest mess is us as people. But not when we're redeemed. Not when we're set free. Not when we have ears to hear as the Holy Spirit wants to speak to our hearts. Amen. Amen. Can you anticipate, just listen, wait, and see what God wants to do? Piata kakariander baba kakashi dia shaka kubariandaya kakashi haroshander baba kashi. God's speaking to somebody. Oh, death, where is thy sting? You have every year. There's a commemoration of those who have died fighting for the land that you're living on. And oh, how precious that is because they believed in their country. But I say unto you, there's nothing ever, and never has been, never will be, as memorial as when I died on the cross for you. Amen. For I shed my blood for you, and I died for you. And I rose again, and I gave you that promise that you would do the same. So then you can freely say, O oh death, where is thy sting? Wow. And you can rejoice with me, knowing that truth is truth, and my truth is always with you, thus said the Lord. That he can use and so he can build his body as you and I. Okay? You know, this is Memorial Day, of course. And a lot of us were in the military. But just think what the prophecy was God did so much more by dying on the cross for our sins. And so many of us, of course, were called into the military. To give whatever it, it took to have freedom in our own country. Now, here's the thing. It just I was willing to do give my time in the military for my country. And I'm more than willing to give my life to my God to save me. But the, here's the thing. And I don't know. I'm just going to say this. It really irritates me that people, of course, in my day, did not... When they were drafted, they took off. They did not conform. Do we want something free? Do we want something for nothing that we don't have to pay for? But I'll tell you what, you don't understand this. That's the most terrible life there is, is you just take, 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 take. Everything costs something. There's a price to pay for everything. You know, when Jesus died on that cross, he paid a terrible, terrible price for us. In fact, he even asked the Father, Take this from me. Nevertheless, come on. And maybe some of us are battling with something. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. When it came time for me to go in the military, and I went in, and man, they got in my face and <laughs> told me, I'm going to do what they're going to do. They're going to tell me they're doing. That's all there is to that. <laughs> I complied. Now, when God puts something in our heart to do something that he wants us to do, can we comply? realizing the terrible price he paid and all he simply wants us to do is yield to him so he can change our understanding so we can realize what it means to be set free by the power of God. Now we're living in this country it's getting worse and worse isn't it? You know I heard the preacher talk this morning he said there's a lot of people that are making millions of dollars that won't stand up to the national anthem. You can do what you want with that. But what about the people that died and paid a, ter a wonderful, a terrible price for us, for our freedom? And that's, that's not, of course, we're just talking about human understanding. But what about the power of God? 
When he died for us, that power becomes part of us, inside of us. Amen? Amen. And I'm telling you what, it's, this thing is to me more exciting each and every day. Finally realizing what God has done, accepting that, realizing what he wants me to do is humble myself before him, put him first, get rid of my pride, my Amen. arrogance, and all this, which I can't do, but if I yield to him, that can be done. I just see the mighty, mighty working of the Holy Spirit. Then you look around and see people struggling and hurting. Oh, my land. Treat people. People in jails, people in prison, pre people, people like us that have really been, you know, down and out. But then you see what God's been able to do. He's working in us. Can you let him work in you? And just let him show you what he's really, really done. Amen? Amen. Man, this thing, I don't know about you, this is exciting. Pastor Daniel, come here a minute. We went, the weed and I, we went to Payson yesterday. And you know, they got, it's just God working. Anyway, you know, we got a chance to talk to the mayor. And one of the guys that has a decent, really a nice church up there. And just letting the Holy Spirit deal with, deal with us. And this is the funniest thing. Because me, I, you know, I, sometimes I get a little feisty. And we're <laughs> grooming Daniel to kind of take over. But, you know, I, gotta get, I still got to get into things. I'm just going to back down. I'm going to do what God wants. I ain't going to retire. But, and this is the funniest thing. Listen to this. We've been kicked out of, I can't tell you how many places in, in Phoenix, Arizona, because this is illegal, that's illegal, can't do this, can't do that, right? In the last place, well, quite a while ago, we're feeding 100, about 150 people a day, right, Robert? Oh, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Pastor Robert, man, day in and day out. We had people down there feeding these people, and it was good. We was preaching to them. It was all over. We cleaned everything up, but they told us we couldn't feed anymore. A bunch of silly rules and regulations, and, you know, we were, we were drawing too many people you know, and they were leaving a mess in their office. It's just silliness. All we're doing is preaching the gospel. Now, this is funny. We're up there talking, and the mayor is a Christian. Didn't know that. But he got, when he got a chance to pray, in fact, we put him on the spot. But he put us on the spot. And him and his wife, man, they could pray. They could seek after God. This is funny. I want you to catch this. I love this. He's, they're interested in the homeless. And the best way I know to reach the homeless is feed them. <laughs> And so we were talking about how we're going to feed them, how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. And we got a place up there that they might, we're, we're negotiating for, for a discipleship program. I love this. This is this. And, we're, and the mayor wants to do all these things, you know. And I said, that's fine. But I says, you know, when we get going out there and feeding people, what's the mayor going to say? They're going to shut us down? Did I say that? And then what did the mayor say? He said, here's my number. Give me a call if anyone gives you any trouble. This is awesome to see all of what God is doing. Can I just acknowledge everyone that was part of the outreach to stand to your feet real quick? Yeah. I could have not had a beautiful outreach. First of all, we have an amazing elite group here for the street. You just throw them in there and you get it done. I literally didn't tell one person to do anything. They just got it done. So I love what we do here. I told a person, I said, you've been in our program 30 days, you're all right. 31 days, you're ready to run a church. You're ready? 31 days. You know? <laughs> but thanks to this Austin, they're really, really behind us. I mean, to have the mayor like that. I even have one of the guys, they were blocking the door so we could have our meeting. And here comes the mayor and his wife. And this, the guy's not even in the program yet. He's going up to Gallup to get in. And he literally is like, Mayor, I'm sorry you can't go in. He's like, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead and go, you know. But it's just, they're getting behind us. You know, we, it's really, real. we can sit here and focus on all the darkness. Guys, there's still light. And the, I don't care how great the darkness is, it will not overpower the light. It will not, it cannot, at no point in time ever or ever will it be. So I just love Pastor Walt and what he's leaving a legacy. Amen. Literally everywhere we go to where we're winning and building people in Jesus' name. Amen. And even the mayors and the whole bureaucracy. He literally is calling people that are high bureaucracy and making sure that we're okay to do what we need to do. So I just appreciate the supporting of even the government. The boss lady coming up. Nine months pregnant. Eight. Oh, eight. 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 I'm 
one of us. Is that right? Why do you follow this whole crazy man? Why should you stay home and be whatever? Oh no, I fell in love with him partly because of just his love for the for God and for the ministry. And so we already talked about how baby's going in a stroller and baby's going to Gallup. Come on, how many you know what? Many of us are babies. You don't have to stay a baby. There ain't nothing wrong with babies. They just need to mature and grow. You can't be a baby for 50 years and still slap us. Somebody still, I've been in church this year, somebody still my seat. I've been here for 15 years. Somebody still. Praise the Lord. This thing's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Now we got a bunch of other crazy guys. So we're going to carry a cross. Get the crosses ready to come in. A couple other guys, if you come up here, you crazy men that's going to carry a cross today. Come on. Come on. Victor. So don't. Come on. Now, I love this again. You know, when God puts something in your heart, first thing a lot of people say, ain't going to work, ain't going to work. Like people have been here a dozen times, or not, not quite. And they didn't get it. They didn't get it after 12 times. Why are you going to bring them back? Absolutely. Amen? Amen? So when somebody says that ain't going to work, you know what? It works It works the opposite of me. Because I think I got a little feisty in me than even the natural person. Well, don't you tell me it ain't going to work. Then I will realize what God's telling us what to do, if he says it, it's going to work. Now, I heard these guys are going to take off They're today, right after the service. They're going to carry a cross to Gallup, New Mexico. God made the way. In fact, I was, praise God, let them go, but I want to sit down and talk to them. I talked to them yesterday or day before, whatever it was. He said, yeah, we got it all straightened out. We're not, in fact, you know, they got, they got everything they need. They got the fire, they got the calling of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Yeah. I know a lot of I've had people tell me, it ain't going to work. Well, get out of the way and watch them. Yeah. If they don't make it, I'm going to tell you something, they're going to give it a good try. Okay. Yeah. I'd rather try and fail than never try at all. How about you? Did God call you to do this? I believe so, yeah. Ago. About three years ago. Yeah. Where were you? Man? Pima County Jail. I just uh, was just reading the word, and I think God spoke to me. He said, hey, build a cross and, and take it for well, It was supposed to be coast to coast, but uh, this is a, uh, here I come, I know nothing about church on the street at all, you know, and someone told me, hey, church on the street, I'm like, church on the street, who's in that? So now that I know, and there's a bunch of crosses underneath the, the, the stairwell right there, I was like, man, I started shopping and looking, and then I just, you pick out a good one. yeah, we pick, pick out a decent one, yeah. It's pretty good, yeah. So just to just to spread the good news. You know, I can tell them to give every cross they want, but not one off my bus. <laughs> just not that one. Yeah. So God is good. So I just think that um, with uh with the help here with uh, uh Pastor JC's workout and the, the eating and, and, and just the, the nutrition uh, nutrition that they give here with the word of God is that's gonna uh, propel us to go and spread the good news. Well, God's called you, that's all you need. Amen. What's in your bone? Um, not a lot. Uh, just looking forward to supporting my brother on his mission. Is there any far in your bones? Hey, man, come on. Now, yeah. Peter says far. I say fire. You got some fire in your bones? I suppose he's sparked quite a flame. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's going to cause you to do. Yes. Now, how long is it going to take you guys? Um, we're calculating about three weeks. About three weeks? Just think about this. Just going to leave for three weeks. I don't know what's going to happen. What if it rains, you know? And, what if, you know, this happens, that happens, whatever. But what if that is the other thing happens? Amen. Let's, I want to see everybody stand up and raise your hands on. We're going to pray for them. Heavenly Father, we just pray for these guys. You have chosen us, God, and ordained us to go forth and bring forth fruit. And that seed was planted in Victor. And as he shared, how our brother Christian over here, he caught it also.
This is you, God. This is a calling that you have put in their hearts. Even though it was a long time ago and he's in jail, he can see it coming to fruition right now. So I pray that the rest of us catch this. Whatever you put in our heart, God, we'd be more and more and more than able to just step out by faith and do it. And we just pray for these guys. Yes, they're going to have their struggles. Yes, they're going to have their battles. But God, if you've chosen them, call it. Yes, they're going to have a mighty, 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 mighty victory. And I pray you put so much fire in their bones that they're going to love this. All the opposition that comes against them are going to say, is God for us? Who can be against us? And then they're going to, other people are going to see the joy of the Lord in them. I pray and I believe that they're going to lead many to Christ by their example along the way. So just go with them, God. Be with them. Make the way. Let your perfect will be done in this situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bring your crosses in. But it was great. Vontae was amazing. He was on fire. I had, time, I had a hard time keeping up with him. You know, I was all trying to do. I was like, oh, like yeah. everybody. He was like, boom, 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 all over the place. But it was yeah. great. Yeah. But I, I want to say, well, we need to start praying for these dealers out there. That they, they will open up their hearts and just see what they're doing to some of these people. Man, you know, the drugs are like it's crazy. Yeah, they was sad, but it was awesome. I'm glad to be a part. I was glad to be a part of this, and you know, like bring some hope out there. You know, and give them some water. You know what I mean? It was just, I don't know, I've never done it before, but it was amazing. I loved it. I'm going to do it again. You're fired up. <laughs> He's a native fired up. Look out. He's going on the warpath. Yeah. Well, here we are again. Yes. Week after week, you're out there. Yes. Yeah, it was awesome. We had an on-fire group today, so it was really awesome. Yeah. God bless you. So the Holy Spirit is out there. You got just to minister to people. Yes, we did. Amen. God bless you. How was it out there? It was fun. It was really fun. I was proud of the distributing. <coughs> What's that? I was proud of distributing, handing out um, food. Oh, no, yeah, but you're a frail young lady. It's afraid of your shadow. No. <laughs> I thought so, but I, you know, it looks for the seat. Thank you. Holy Ghost gets the Holy Ghost gets you out there. Is that so exciting, fun? Is that is that a new way of life for you? It is. It's really fun being on fire for Christ. Yeah, Realize, he yeah. does have a better plan. Completely different from our human understandings. So that was neat, huh? It was really neat. Well, God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Not a to <laughs> Did you go out there today? I wouldn't do that, honey. Say something. How was it? It was great. It was the first time I've actually been out there since uh, I've been here. I've been here since August last year. So, does God bring your family back? Here? Oh yeah. Amen. Every day. Isn't that the neatest thing? Use the God to go out and mm -hmm. like you did today. Oh and yeah. Just minister. Oh yeah. I got to bring my fiance to bring my son today, and you know she's sitting over there. Maybe one of these days, I don't know. Maybe she can take your son out. <laughs> but not carry him. No. No, whatever, you know, just let God be God. God bless you guys. Go get him. You gotta go quick. You guys here from the mission. How old is it up there? Oh, it's great. First time? First time. How long have you been in mission? Uh, been there a whole week. 
And you're out there doing this. How come? Wanted to. Looks like you got some fire in your eyes. <laughs> what was it like out there? It was great. Just carrying across, people waving at you. Yeah. Peace signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. You know, my day. This is the funniest thing. We had a oh, had a little Volkswagen years ago. What did it have on the side of it? He was not saved, and he, got, he bought a used, old, beat-up VW that had a fish symbol on it. This is the time of the Jesus people, remember? So this guy goes by, and he goes like this. You know, one way, that's what we all did, one way. Well, he saluted him back. Oh, yeah. Mark changed fingers. So it's me out there. Think about maybe coming in a program? Yeah, I'll be here Friday. Amen, brother. Yeah. 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 How about you, man? It was uh, pretty warm out, but it was great. Yeah. Didn't see too many people, but you know, carrying this cross, walking down the street, is uh, really killer. Amen. You think? You think it'd be warm in hell? Well, it's, uh, there's no temperature. It's pretty hot there. Uh, it's, it's like, you know. That's right. I mean, it's hot in hell, right? But if we want to tell people, even though it's a little warm here, it'll all come before us, but God's, He died on the cross for us. That's right. He's sending us out. So, you know, we might have to pay a little price, too, so He can use us to win other people. Amen? Amen. 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 How was it? It was good. What'd you do? Talk to people. You carry across the road? No. You just talk to people? Talk to people. Oh, people about the Lord. Amen. How long have you been in me? Can't remember. Quite, quite a while. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You're getting established down there, aren't you? I am. Kind of one of the leaders? Yeah, the one's the leader. He's a cool dude. Yeah. I'm sober today. He's the Lord. And, uh, All right. So great. I feel like you're growing in his grace and knowledge. Different lifestyle altogether. You ready to go for it completely? I'm a new man. I'm not going back. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's hear the word of God. Last week we were studying Isaiah, so I thought we'd turn to Isaiah chapter 55. It's an invitation for us to come to him and get that free water. Isaiah 55, and this is the English Standard Version. Isaiah 55. Come everyone who thirsts. Come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear, that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace, the mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. 
and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Thank you. That's about the end of the Word of God. You know, we get to hear it, we get to submit to it, allow it to work in our hearts, and then it will accomplish what God wants it to accomplish. And He wants to use us. Somebody believe that. If we could get the ushers and the, the group from to take the offering. How many needs a challenge? We all do. Now, you know, we went up to Payson yesterday. You know, the time, Dad, Pastor Daniel's been talking to me. We need to buy a new van. Not a new one, but a van. I mean, we're renting the things, you know, it's cost us money and everything else. We need one. we got to have one. Because we're buzzing all over the place. And in fact, we was up there yesterday, and uh, we were talking about the homeless. In fact, the mayor knows where all the homeless, he's got a buddy that knows where all the homeless are. I was talking to Daniel, and the first thing he said to me, why don't we go pick up some homeless? I said, how can we do it? He said, well, I got this van. But I'm just thinking, you know, God will put some desires in your heart. But we've got to be willing to be willing and obedient to fulfill those desires. Now, we need a van. And somehow or another, I'm going to get a commitment some way or another. In fact, if you know anybody has got a van and wants to give to us, if you know anybody has got a decent van they want to sell to us, you come talk to us. Because we're going to pray the Holy Ghost. It's going to lead us to guide us. And I'll tell you what, you guys are going to have to pay for it. But God will put it in your heart. Come on. What is a soul worth? It was worth Jesus dying on a cross for us, right? Now, the excitement. And just these guys carrying a cross, guys in their mission. I mean, there's an excitement there. And to me, going out and feeding homeless, bringing them in. We've been doing it as long as I... That's how Church on the Street got here. Me preaching on the street to homeless people. Yeah. yeah. Not knowing what I was doing. And man, I tell you what, there was a lot of... What do you want to say? Misguidance? Not, of my own understanding, not God's. Just following the homeless. Minister to them, and here we are. And when they go to jail, you go to jail with them. Start a service there. You go to prison with them, when they go to prison, you start a service there. When they get out, you got to have a place for them, you got a place for them. Now we got them all here congregated. We had a church room. I didn't trust any other church, so I want to have my own church. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. That's God. Now God's made the way. He's still going to make the way. And He wants to use us. Now, if you just let this work in you, it's not a burden. Ah, oh, my money, you got money. No, no, no. God wants to use you, bless you, give you the opportunity. Because you give, you're part of all this. Yeah. Okay. Meaning that God's going to bless you okay. by doing your little part. And He's not going to want you to do more than you can handle. Amen? Amen. And by the way, He challenges us to give. Nowhere else in the Bible does He challenge us. He says, see if I won't do something if you give. And then, of course, we need we got to feed people. Now, we're talking about a building up there. We're talking about 1500 bucks a month, and that's just to get the building. we got other people. I mean, God's going to put it together the way He's going to put it together, if it's His will. But we need to get involved in this. Some of you might be afraid to go out the street and even carry crosses. I don't know why. Or carry signs or preach to I don't know why, but that's fine. But you can give. And I believe some of them, I'll tell you, listen to this. Some of you got families, and when you get done, you know, this program, God wants to give you a good job. Can He trust you with the job? To pay your tithes? To give back to the Lord? So God can use what you give in tithes to go out and minister to other people. Everybody catching this? So just think about this. Let God deal with you. Not some old crazy preacher that says, you got to give. No. You give, God's going to give back to you. There's nothing better than being God's economy. And by the way, He's got an energy drink that's better than anything they got. That, that machine out there, you know what? It's called the Holy Ghost. You know what that Holy Ghost is? A piece of God that passes all understanding. It's a win-win deal. So let's just catch this. We're part of something. We're part of the body. And God's going to challenge us, of course. But he's going to come through. How many truly believe that? Now, he wants us to come through with our, with our finances, with our tithes and offerings. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, you got to speak to our hearts. And I pray, God, 
as you speak, people will be able to come up, stand up by faith, and be willing to, to press on and give as you put it in their hearts. And I ask you guys just to bless the gift and the giver. Use whatever you're, you're going to give us, God, to use this wisely to build your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Praise the Lord. We got some graduates. a little bit, but uh, <laughs> small. It's, it's made, what's on my heart is just, um, it was amazing, we were in Payson, and uh, we went up there, you know, there's a guy, David, he's going to Gallup, you know, he was on the streets out there, and now he's going to Gallup, man, he's going to, it's just really amazing to see what God, yeah, he didn't have the guts to come here, no, but it was really amazing, and it was just to, to see everybody that went up there, and we, uh, just people getting clothes, we had, you know, clothes for the homeless, food, it was just really amazing up there. Victor go. Oh, come on up here. You know, it's just me watching God work. No, this is me. I, I was just, I was pleasing this guy. He came in, I guess he was a mess. I guess they got him a shower, got him some clothes, got him all cleaned up, and he really, truly wants to serve the Lord. He says, I, he says, Phoenix is too big for me right now. I'm not ready for that. So I'm, he says, I'm going to get like, oh, you old coward, I just teased him. He got a sparkle in his eye. You know, the thing is, we just got to let God be God. How many's afraid? Come on, how many's afraid to just let God be God? Let Him have His way. Let you be, let you be you. How many of us hide from, no, we're afraid to be us. No, we. Oh, I don't get into that. Anyway, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. Vincent. Pastor Wall, you send a bus for me over there at the mission. Uh, I know that God put that in, in you for a long time, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I heard on Matthew 10, 27 says, uh, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me, and they follow me. And I heard I heard that voice, so that's why I'm here, and I finish everything, and thank you for everybody, you know, that support me and everything. Right now, I'm in Mexico. Uh, I'm going to go back leave over there and help Pastor Ramon. Because that's what my calling is. Amen, brother. Amen. He's very, 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 very talented artistically. He's got a painting in my office that's unreal. I want you to see if I got two of them in there. And I don't know how he did this. He got an old hat and he started painting on it. And he gave it to me. And I don't wear, you know, hats a lot, but unbelievable how, you know, and he'd been in different programs before, but, you know, somehow or another, and God's raising him up and using him. His talents, his abilities, I, I, he probably said, how come I don't pay attention to me? God's paying attention to him. He is a good one. You know, and by the way, no matter how good you are, you let God be God. He'll put you where you need to be. If you need your butt spanked, he's going to put you in. And behind the spanking machine, but if, you, but if you need to be, you know, just sit back and wait. Now, I'm sure he's really going to do a mighty good work in Mexico. Proud of you. Um, I just want to say something in Spanish to my wife. You guys, she's looking right there. 
<laughs> Nena, esto es para ti. Esto, hijo, es para ti, Mateo. Ay, my son. Los amo, los quiero. Y para ti también, todo es para ti, ¿ok? Thank you. Gracias. Like a bus. Yeah. Future and forever. Yeah. Yeah. Let God be God and it will work. This is effective. All our leaders are effective. Never forget your leaders. And what's next? You don't have to ask the question, and I'm going to tell you. This church has helped me. This play, it's, all, it's all God. This church has built me up. Uh, I'm moving on, but I'm going to still be around. Daniel, where are you at? He, uh, he said, pray it out. Oh, are you crazy? Because honestly, every time people around such as family always shut me down. But my mom and my sister is in the house. That's what this is that need. Just you ain't done yet. <laughs> okay, then go sit down. I'm not gonna give you the diploma. <laughs> you ain't done yet. Come on back. I tell you what, get your mom's back there. She's gonna give it to you. Come on, mom. trying to serve God and falling short. Especially when you're young and you know, you just look around. I could just see it. He's, this man is extremely talented. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Big time. But you know, I, I think he he struggled a lot with being raised, you know. Some of us that have been out in the streets running and gunning. You know, we get saved. We don't know about all the, the day by day stuff that goes on in the churches. People are some people don't do what they're supposed to do, you know, and they say one thing or do another. So but just to see him hanging in here all this time, because I sense, and I met his dad. He's, his dad to me is a good one. Amen. So we're proud of you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see real people. You know, there's more real people in here than there probably are in any other room right, right now in Phoenix. You know, there's something about 
I, and I appreciate about that. And I have a great respect for everyone who's made it this far and who still who sticks around here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all here. All over the bum. Praise the Lord. He ain't done yet. I thought he'd run away from ministry. Well, full-time ministry, yes. But I'll, I'll help Chaplain Luke. Amen. God bless you. You're a good one. Um, I want to thank you, first of all, Ms. Lewin, um, for allowing me to do this program and to actually stay and complete it, because you know I used to be a, a runner uh, once upon a time. But, um, I'm so grateful um, that I'm here and that I did the program, and I want to thank all my uh, disciples, my brothers, and especially my sisters over here. Amen. Uh, you guys. Where are you now? I am stepping out on faith, and I'm going to my next journey. Amen. Yeah. What? I'm going on my next journey. What's that? That means I'm I'm leaving. But 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 I will um, stay in touch with the with the house with the church house. I will. She's not leaving God though. No, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm coming back tomorrow. I have to work out with JC. That's right. Come on. What are you gonna do next week? Uh, I'll be here. I'm, you're not gonna get rid of me like that. That's right, come on. Are you going to second page? No. Well, let's just see what, you know what, I love this. Just let God be God. Right. Yeah. We let God be God, he knows how to be God. You know, it's kind of funny. She said she used to be a runner, she's still a runner. Get her out there running. Oh, in the yeah. workouts, and she's, she's, a, she's a good runner. You know, it's just, has this place been fun? You know what, it is fun, and I do have struggles. I, you know, I struggle. It's not easy, it really isn't, but it is, but it is a good place. enjoyed my time here, and, you know, and I know that I gave people hard times or whatever, and I do apologize to those people that I gave hard times to, but I, I yeah, you can't get rid of me yet. Uh, can I talk? Yes. Would you have me that thing? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I like this. She says I've been struggling. She's the only one that's here has been struggling. Yeah. By the way, if you ain't struggling, you ain't serving God. Yes, right. Come on. Everybody, everybody does. I was struggling to get the mic back. <laughs> this is great. You know, this is a people. God's a, God's a people. God, isn't he? he? Made people in his image. He made us all for a reason. And that's simply just to glorify him. That means just whoever we are, how bad or whatever, how many times we fall, we just keep glorifying him, keep getting back up. I believe that glorifies God. Because he knows our hearts. He knows we're trying. He knows we fall short. He knows we're struggling. But he knows how to keep us. Set us on high above all the nations of the earth. And the blessings, the Bible says, will chase us down and catch us. Not on her running and gunning. She stopped long enough to... Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody. Amen. Um, want to, this Memorial Day weekend, we want to honor our uh, servicemen and women. Any servicemen and women, would you please stand up so we can honor you? Amen. Yes. Thank you. bulletin it says greater love is no one this than this that, that he would lay down his life for his friend or for another amen and so we thank you for your service today uh well this weekend we remember those who have fallen those who have fallen 
uh, in the line of service, in their line of duty, in their line of uh, their belief and, and uh, their desire to uh, uphold what we believe in and to fight for freedom and for liberty. And, um, and so it's, it's really a, a beautiful thing. I, uh, I was thinking that one of the ways that we know that we are at war is that there are casualties. As we honor our fallen soldiers, you know, that's one of the ways that we know that, that there's a war. And I was thinking that the Bible often talks about us like a soldier. <coughs> And here we have what we call a spiritual boot camp. And, and you know, you, you might want to think about, well, why do, we, why do we speak that way? Why do we think that way? Well, uh, we are, too, also at war. We have had many that have died, amen? Many who have died under the banner of Jesus Christ, amen? From the beginning... Uh, of Jesus' ministry, we see John the Baptist was decapitated by Herod. and uh, Stephen was stoned at the feet of Saul. Jesus himself was crucified at the hands of Pontius Pilate. Peter was crucified and upon his own request was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to be crucified like the Lord Jesus Christ. Andrew, after having been scourged seven times, Upon his naked body was crucified by the proconsul at Achaia. James was beheaded by Herod Antipas in Palestine. John was thrown into a cauldron of boiling. They couldn't kill John, though. I think he was a little crispy, but they didn't kill him. Amen. John was, he was thrown into a boiling oil by Domitian, but God delivered him, and he died of old age uh, at the island of Patmos. Philip was scourged and crucified um, and, uh, by the magistrates at Heropolis. I don't know if I said that right. Bartholomew was put to death by a Roman governor in Armenia. Matthew suffered martyrdom at Nadabar in Ethiopia. Thomas was shot to death with arrows by the Brahmins in India. James the Less was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple at Jerusalem, and his head was smashed with a club right where he fell. Simon was crucified and buried in Britain. Jude was cruelly put to death by torture by the Magi of Persia. And Matthias, the successor of Judas Iscariot, was stoned and then beheaded. And so we see that even from the beginning... Uh, Christianity was viewed upon as, as a threat, and there was a war because we, we took casualties even from the beginning. Today, around 215 million Christians, the next slide please, was, uh, face significant levels of persecution in the world today. According to the latest World Watch list from Open Doors, during... Uh, 2018 World Watch List, 3,066 Christians were killed in 2018 alone. 1,252 were abducted. 1,020 were raped or sexually uh, harassed. 793 churches were attacked, destroyed, or damaged. And over 4,000... 40,613 people were arrested for their faith in Jesus Christ, including our, our, my college professor, Dr. Rahman, and our, our friend here at Church on the Street. The worst countries currently are North Korea and Afghanistan. And uh, in Africa and Asia, there are noted increases uh, this year in persecution to Christians due to the increased Islamic influence. So, if you want to know whether or not we are soldiers, if you want to know whether or not we are at war, if we're not, then why are we taking casualties? If not, then, then why are people dying in the name of Jesus Christ and in what we believe in? 
And so we have to open our eyes. Listen, the enemy would love nothing more than for us to, uh, to, to be lulled to sleep with a false sense of security that everything is all right and not realize that we are in a battle. Now that's not even to mention the battlefront that we see here at home. How many young people are becoming addicted to, to drugs, to alcohol, to pornography? How many young people are out here on these streets, victims of, of, of violence? How many young people got to go to prison and to jail in the revolving doors of the prison system where 78% recidivism rate, where people just go into prison and they come out of prison and they go right back into prison? over and over again how many babies are aborted when are we going to open our eyes and realize that we are at war and so we can make fun that you know we have a boot camp and we can make fun that we have green beret and we can we can kind of say oh you know that it's a cute little thing but in reality we are more at war than anybody else our war has lasted over 2,000 years our war has taken casualties beyond number, beyond what we could count. And it is as real as can be. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray, God, that you would bless our time together. And Lord, that you would help me to deliver this message in the spirit in which you want it to be received. Father God, bless the hearers. Bless our time together, Father, in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 So Paul compares the Christian life to the life of a soldier. Because every Christian is in a battle for his own soul and for the souls of others. We're not just in, in our own. See, uh, we can make the Christian walk all about just us, but it's really not just about us. Amen. Amen. What do we go out to the streets for? Why are we carrying crosses? Why are we going uh, to Gallup in, in different places in New Mexico, different places in Prescott, all these places in Arizona? Because it's not just about us, amen? This isn't just a program for you to get cleaned up. This is a program so that you can be useful for the Master, so that you can go out as a good soldier of Jesus Christ and spread the gospel to everybody who He wants. And that's everybody, so we got a big task, amen? Jesus loves everybody. That's right. So all of us as Christians are in a battle for our own soul and for the souls of others. Paul says to, Tim to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. He writes to the church at Ephesus and he says, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, and against the uh, evil forces of wickedness and darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Paul calls Epaphroditus, that's, we're going to call him Pappy, amen. Gonna, Paul calls Pappy and Archippus, I'm not even going to try to say that one, fellow soldiers. Paul told the Corinthians, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. They are not carnal, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, he says, Do you see... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's what that was. Do you see yourself as a Christian soldier? Do you see yourself as a Christian soldier? Amen. Is that not what we're trying to do here? Is that not what we are promoting? Is that not what, in reality, not virtual reality, not what the world sees, amen, but in actual reality, in the spiritual realm, that is what we are and that is what we are called to, amen? Do you see your job as obeying the orders of the commander-in-chief and our Lord? Christ? Do you see your job is to take back the enemy's ground and to expand the kingdom of God? That's exactly what God has called us to do. So how are we like a soldier? Well, like a soldier, 
we go to boot camp, amen? amen? I don't care whether you're in this program or you just gave your life to Christ. I didn't go through a program. I, I was uh, on drugs and, and, you know, living that, that street life, doing whatever stupid people do. Uh, I'm not saying you, I'm saying I was stupid, amen? Um, you know, uh, independent pharmaceutical distribution and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, but when I gave my life to Christ, amen, all of a sudden, I realized I had no skills for the kingdom of God, amen? I had some skills for, for doing what I was doing, but, you know, as a young man, I had really, I dropped out of high school and I, I, I had... No skills. I didn't think I would preach or teach or, you know, uh, make music or anything like that. I, I, I was a loser in, in the kingdom of God. I had to relearn everything. Amen? Read a book. Are you kidding me? How many of y'all read books before you came to Jesus? Amen? Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't, don't even... <laughs> So we all have to come to boot camp because the Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And just like a, uh, somebody who enlists in the military, you got to go and you got to learn a whole new way of life. Because soldier life is totally different from any kind of life. There are many things that a new recruit must learn. They're entering a whole new way of life and it is important for him to come to trust and obey those who rank over him, to act quickly without questioning orders. <laughs> don't look at your leaders, amen. Don't, leaders, don't look around. Don't do it. That's not nice. Be nice. But why? Why do we need to learn how to respond quickly? Why do we need to get over our little emotional uh, issues and our little tantrums? Why is it so important so that we can be useful for the kingdom? Because somebody else's life depends on it. Amen? We ain't got time to be sitting around explaining everything. We just need you to be on point. Amen? We just need you to be on post. We just need you to uh, do your job. Amen? Amen? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone's life might depend on it. When people are shooting and bombs are going off, you ain't got time to ask dumb questions, amen? You need to duck. You need to get down. You need to get behind this. We need to have form a strategy. We need to go over there and turn the corner and shoot them back or whatever we got to do, amen? But we ain't got time for... You know, I'm emotionally torn between whether I should listen to you or... It's a matter of life or death. Look at your neighbor and say, ain't nobody got time for that. When you're a soldier, there are some things you ain't got time for, amen? I need help. Stop acting like a civilian. I need help. Men of God, women of God, rise up. Amen. Let's be obedient to the king. Let's realize it. There's important stuff going on here. And as long as I play my games. Mm. Amen. People get hurt. People get hurt. See, we exercise a lot to build our strength. We train so that we can be skilled. We learn how to be responsive to the chief and the commander. We prepare. In quiet times, a soldier prepares for the next battle. He piles up sandbags. He digs foxholes. He cleans his weapon. He practices. See, as a Christian soldier, we need to be prepared for the next battle. Because I'm going to tell you something. The devil doesn't take vacations, amen? The devil ain't going to stop fighting you. The devil's not going to stop uh, you know, attacking because, you know, you got uh, married or you got a job or you got, uh, you know, you got a star on your... He's not going to stop, amen? This is an ongoing battle. You cannot let your guard down. When we let our guard down... He fights dirty, I'm telling you. I am telling you, he fights dirty. 
He's constantly looking. The Bible says he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for permission. He's looking for an entry point. He's looking for a chink, a weakness in your armor, in your character. He's looking for something. He's looking at you closely. You need to be checking yourself closely. So that he don't find the weakness before you do. Because if you find it, then you can ask God to strengthen you. But if he finds it, he's going to get you. Oh, man. So we prepare. Jude one twenty says, Beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. In the downtime, we need to learn how to use our weapons. A soldier must learn to use and trust his weapon. A soldier can be powerful, can be very powerful, using the right weapons at the right time. God has given the Christian soldier... Some very powerful weapons. We need to learn how to use them. The Word of God. Okay. Okay. Amen? We need to learn how to use the Word of God. We need to learn how to use it on ourselves. We need to learn how to use it against the enemy. We need to learn how to use each other. You know, the greatest uh, strength that any soldier has is his other soldiers. Amen? Amen. See? We, we need to fight not with each other, but for each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I will fight for you. See, we got to stop fighting against each other and for each other. Amen? Amen. See, in the downtime, we need to learn our rules of engagement. You know what rules of engagement is? That, that tells you when you can fight, when you should fight, and when you shouldn't fight. Because see, if you're fighting when you're not supposed to be fighting, you're going to lose. Hello? Oh, man. Some of you didn't get that. If you're fighting when you're not supposed to be fighting, you're going to lose. Because there are times when God says, shut up, stay still, just stand there. I'm going to fight your battle, but you know I got this, God. I can, I can do this. We can handle this. Come on now. Come on. And you're fighting a fight just to fight. Amen. And you're going to lose oh, because of pride. You're going to lose because of selfishness. You're going to lose. We need to learn the rules of engagement. How to fight. If you're fighting against somebody that's a person, you're already wrong. Hello. Some of y'all love to fight people. A rebel without a cause. Just fight just for the sake of fighting. Just a fighter. You want to call yourself a Christian, but you want to just rip into somebody like a monkey on a cupcake. Just fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Talking about people. <laughs> what are we doing? We lose every time we wrestle against flesh and blood. The scripture, the scripture is clear about it. Why are we fighting our brothers and our sisters? Why? I, I sometimes it, it grieves me. I try to, you know, be blessed and watch some Christian television. Then you turn something on, and a dude takes thirty minutes just talking about all the other bad ministries and all the other bad preachers and all the. And that's what the world is seeing. You took thirty minutes where you could have preached the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and all you're doing is you're cutting down your brother and the way that they believe and the way they think and the way now this church and that church and the other thing. Man, that is an ugly thing. I can't wait till denominationalism goes away. And it, it is going to go away. Man, I don't know. There's not a Baptist section in heaven. There's not a Pentecostal section in heaven. There's not a whatever, whatever. Frozen, chosen section in heaven. We need to learn the rules of engagement. How to fight. How to fight with and not against. How to fight for. How to fight on our knees. How to do spiritual warfare. Amen. When to fight. But, you know, correcting people isn't wrong. You know, I hear a lot about people getting beat up and stuff like that. Oh, don't beat me up. You know what? Sometimes 
The people who you feel like beat are beating you up love you more than you can ever understand. Amen? If you got somebody in your life that loves you enough to try to correct you out of a spirit of love, you are a blessed person. You are blessed. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of times, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of places. Listen, in my life, I didn't have a whole lot of discipline growing up. And I thought that that was love, amen? And, and it was a form of love, but I could have used, I probably could have used a couple of more spankings, amen? Some of y'all ain't willing to admit it, but I know you do, amen? Because I, I feel like spanking you. No, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> discipline isn't the worst thing. As a matter of fact, if I see you in trouble and I say nothing, that shows my lack of care for you, my lack of love for you. But if I correct you out of love because I want for you what I want for me, I want you to be blessed like I'm blessed. I want you to grow like I'm growing. I want you to hear God like I'm hearing God. I want you to fulfill the purposes of God the way he's doing in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that drill sergeant might need to get in your face. Do you hear me? He might need to get all up in your stuff. But it's going to help you in the battle of your life, in the battle for your wife, in the battle for your children, in the battle against addictions, in the battle against strongholds, in the battle, amen, to find that purpose that he's called you for. I don't know where I'm at in my notes. I got a whole lot of notes. I'm going to stick to time this time, amen. Eh? Uh, we need to learn how to confront the enemy. We need to know who the enemy is. We need to study our enemy. He's studying us, amen. There's a song and it says, one of the lyrics, it says, uh, uh, the devil learns from your mistakes even if you don't. You need to learn how to study. You need to know his patterns of behavior. Because there's usually just certain things that he uses to get to us. He knows that those are the effective. He doesn't waste his time. You know, he doesn't waste his time with like, with, with greed. I'm not a greedy person. He doesn't waste his time with, you know, uh, you know uh, bitterness and unforgiveness. I, I, you know, I'm, I don't struggle with those things. He knows. See, he knows. He studies me. And see, I got to study him. So as soon as I get that, that feeling or that thought, I know where it's coming from. Amen? Amen. You got to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Where does that thought come from? Hmm. Yeah, that's the dad. It looks like the devil all day long. Satan not uh, denied. Amen? Denied. That's a, I'm going to take that problem. I'm going to squash that like a cucaracha. We're not going to accept that one. That ain't from God right there. Take that back to the boogeyman. Amen. See, we need to learn. We need to learn his strategies. We need to confront him with truth. Amen. We need to confront ourselves with truth. Call sin, sin. Call sin, sin. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. It's not a, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, because when I, when I agree with God, at the point of agreement comes the power of God. When I agree with God's word, when I agree with what he says is wrong, is wrong. Not with what uh, the, the uh, superior court says, amen. Not with what, uh, you know, uh, popular opinion says. Not with what uh, Facebook says or, or you know, uh, YouTube says or whatever, right? We, we got all these opinions coming in. <coughs> They're just opinions. I don't care how many people believe them. I don't care how many people follow them. That is just your opinion. What does God have to say about it? Amen? See, when we know how to... When we know how to rightly divide the word of truth, even if I don't... You know what I mean? There's some things in the word that I don't fully understand or I don't really care that passionately about, but God does. And so at that point, I got to go, uh, well... Yeah, God knows more than me, so I'm going to go with God. Amen? Amen. And hopefully, you know, I'll learn to understand it as I grow or whatever. But, you know, that's just the way it is. That's right. That God said it, 
It is settled. Okay. It's like the law of the Mer the Medes and the Persians. Amen. If it's written down, that's it. So we got to learn. We've got to learn. We've got to learn who our enemies are. Right? We've got we've got an enemy within. Amen. We got to learn how to fight that enemy. And we got to learn how to embrace people who will help us to fight that enemy. Hello? Hello, discipleship. You have an enemy within, and there are people in this room who are trying to help you to fight that enemy. Do not turn the fight against them. They're trying to help you. We have an enemy without. We have a world. We have all types of worldly influences and ideas and, uh, and concepts and theories about how we should live our... Listen, don't matter. We need to learn how to stand on the Word of God. And what God says is true. What God's principles are true. Now, we still have to live in this world, right? The Bible says not to be entangled with the things of the world. The key there is entangled. It doesn't say not to be in the world. It says not to be of the world. Amen. I thank God I got a job and I got a house and I got a car and I got a wife. I thank God for those things, but God is still God. Amen. God is still number one. If all those things blow up, amen, I'm still going to be good, amen. I'm still going to serve God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord, amen. I was homeless just about four or five years ago, amen. I almost moved in here, amen. So, you know, I'm close to the edge, praise God. I, I don't have security in those things. Those things have not entangled me. Amen? Amen? So, as a soldier, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. Now, now this is a long fight. Yes. See, soldier, they might only be in war for, you know, a couple of years, a couple of tours, maybe three, maybe four. I mean, some of the crazy ones might do some more. I don't know, you know. But we can't let up. But the Bible calls it a good fight. The Bible calls it a good fight because, listen, God is fighting with us and for us. So there's a lot of those things that we don't have to do. We just have to be positioned right. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. There are times when he just says, stand. Yes. I'm going to fight the battle for you. You just stand, but you got to be standing. Amen? Yes. you got to put yourself in the right spot. Yes. Think about uh, some of the battles that were fought in, in, you know, in the Bible where, where God says, hey, I just need you to walk around the walls, right? I just need you to break some pots. I just need you to sing some songs and watch me do what I'm going to do, amen? So we've always got to be positioned properly in order for God to do His part. But God is faithful, more than faithful, amen? Amen. Uh, I don't know where I'm at. Battle. I tried to write it all down because I've been struggling with keeping time, so I was... I'm going to write it down, but I can't read like that. <laughs> All right, so let me just start reading. Our enemy knows he doesn't have to annihilate the church. He just needs to take us out of fight mode and our God-given destiny and purpose. A soldier without a kingdom to protect and orders to follow has nothing. Our church... Our church is releasing people into their preordained destinies, into our preordained identities and our calling. We are producing warriors and soldiers who are prepared for our mission. Warriors are people who change the atmosphere and ignite passion in those around them. Warriors, through their total obedience and fearless commitment, are windows into the kingdom that we are created for. Far above all principalities and powers. Warriors get things done. Amen? As a soldier of Christ, our first mission is to change the atmosphere around us. Church, we are ambassadors of reconciliation who represent a merciful king who has paid the price for freedom and blessing for whosoever will be saved. Spiritual warriors fight, <clears throat> excuse me, fight for the freedom for all people. 
to realize through experience all the blessings God intends for them to inherit. The plan of the enemy is to create and to disperse misery. Isn't that what we see all around us? To take away hope and maintain a climate of despair and helplessness. We overcome evil with good. We must position ourselves daily as a good soldier in order to have the power to open the eyes of the blind and to release the prisoners so that they can see and so that they can believe. Amen. Otherwise, we're going to continue to live our lives selfishly. Like someone with a cure for a disease for the masses, but we don't share it because we have a lack of love and a lack of mercy. None of us has an excuse to sit around and just complain about the encroaching darkness and the evil in the world. We are called to be the answers to the problems of the world. We have the solution and the, His name is Jesus. Amen. We just got to go out and we just got to tell it. We're all enlisted in God's army, but the training required to be a true warrior requires great sacrifice, discipline, and faith. Like David's mighty men, we are raised up to battle and to hold ground in the spiritual realm. David's men were identified by their, by their specific strengths and callings. There's a lot of little stories about different soldiers and the things that they did. And it was different, you know. Different people have different strengths. In the military, they, they figure out who, you know, who's strong in this area, who's, who's strong in that area, and try to put people in the places uh, where they belong. Not everybody has the same gifting. Not everybody has the same calling. Not everybody has the same talent. But together, we can fulfill everything that God has for us to do. Amen? So part of uh, the strategy is to put everybody in their place. Flip over. We will suffer hardship, but that's all right. You know what? We need, to, we need to be the people who embrace hard things, amen? We need to be the ones who take on hard stuff. Oh, that's hard? Okay, that's where we're going to go. That's something that nobody else wants to do? Then that's what I'm going to go do, amen? There's, those are the people that God doesn't, or that, that other churches don't want, that church on the street is going to go out there. We're going to go into the front line, and we're going to go to places where people are scared to go. The streets belong to Jesus. Jesus' ministry when he was on earth was on the streets. They belong to him then, and they belong to him today. We just got to go take our ground back, amen? We just got to go claim it in the name of Jesus. We do hard stuff. That's what we do, amen? That's what we're called to do. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We live to please the one who enlisted us. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 says, Therefore also we have our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to Him. Our duty is to suffer hardship, to keep from becoming entangled in everyday life. The motive is that we do so in order to please Jesus Christ, in order to fulfill our calling, in order to fulfill our destiny. One day, I don't know about you, but I want Him to look at me and say, well done, you good and faithful servant. Amen. I, you've done what I've called you to do. Come and enter into rest. Until then, it's a fight. He's the one who enlists us. He's the one who called us into the kingdom. He gave us a uniform and marching orders. We are to live to please Him. Is that our ambition today? Do we really desire above everything else to live a life that is pleasing to Christ? Or are we only looking out for our own interests? Listen, God has blessed us. I really believe and I'm, I'm so grateful to be a part of this ministry. God has blessed us with a ministry who sees the need. And does something about it. Amen? Amen. We're not a part of an apathetic ministry. We're not a part of a super spiritualized ministry. Where, where the reality of what's happening in the world. And, and the spiritual reality is so far removed. That we feel okay. To let things go on around us. And we feel like we don't have any, anything that we can do. Anything that we can contribute. 
Well, I love what our pastor says. He says, I want to see what God can do in this world through a bunch of misfits like us. Amen. We might not be having it all together. Amen. We might not have all the answers. We might not have all the ideas and all the concepts. But this we know. The world is hurting. The world is broken. The streets are dangerous. There's all kinds of craziness out there in the world. And Jesus can fix all of that. We just need to go out and take Jesus into those places. How many are with me? How many are with me? Stand to your feet, soldiers. Stand to your feet, soldiers. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we can gather together in your name. We are your people called by your name, Father God. And we will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our ways, Father God. Because we want you to hear from heaven, God. We ask that you would forgive our sins and that you would heal our land, Father. Help us to take this ministry of reconciliation and this, and this calling, God, to bring the gospel into all the world. Serious, Lord God. You have called us, Lord, for a purpose and a time, and you've given us places, Lord God. And we thank you for the opportunity to go. We know it's not going to be easy, Father by God, but we're going to go anyway, amen? We know, God, that it's not going to come without a price, Father God, but it's worth it. We're going to go, Lord God, because we know, Father God, that you are the great God of all war. And we know, Father God, that we win. We're fighting a battle, Father God, but we're the, the, everything is slanted in our direction, Father God. We know that we win because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and we thank you. We salute you in our hearts, Father God. We worship you, and we will obey you, Father. Bless this church, Father. Continue to bless our pastors and our leaders, Father, with wisdom, Father God, to lead us and guide us. To take all the land that you've called us to take. To, to fulfill the purposes that you've called us to fulfill, Father God. In Jesus' name, God, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.